Martha Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddhadikai. Today in this video we are going to be studying from the book Hagakure, which means Hidden Leaves. This particular book documents the thoughts, philosophies, mindset, and principles of the samurai, or the way of the samurai, by Yamamoto Sutomo. Now anyone who's been following my channel, you guys know that I developed the Buddhadikai back in 2004. And the Buddhadikai prides itself on five areas of training called the Goho no Keiko. The most popular area of training that most of my viewers like to watch is the Nanamusha Den, which means the seven warrior traditions. The majority of people who watch the videos, they like to watch the traditional uh, ninjutsu and traditional samurai bujutsu videos that we post and philosophies and trainings pertaining to. However, the school does have five areas of training, and one of the other five areas of training is called the Nihon Mushukyu, which means the study of the Japanese warrior. What that is, is we try to look at ancient text and scrolls, dinsho documents that are outside of the seven traditions to give us a much deeper look into the way of the samurai or the way of the ninja, the mindset, the philosophy, the way that they did things and take that deeper study and add it to a broader knowledge of the seven word traditions that we have here within the Buddha Dikai. So today, we're going to be working from the book, the Hagakure. Again, it means hidden leaves. And this book documents like I said, the thoughts, the mindset, the philosophy, or the way of the samurai um, by Yamamoto Sutomo. Now, there are so many quotes on the internet that really throw, um, that are used from the Hagakure everywhere. So I'm going to use a quote that isn't one of the more popular quotes. In fact, we're going to go all the way to the back to chapter 11. Um, yeah, we're in the 11th chapter, the very in the back of the book, and we're going to talk about this particular quote and how you can use this mindset or this particular philosophy towards looking at how you should approach your training um, with the martial arts. So here, uh, the quote reads this, There is nothing so painful as regret. We would like to be without it. However, when we are very happy and become elated, or when we habitually jump into something thoughtlessly, later we are distraught. And it is for the most part because we did not think ahead and are now regretful. Certainly, we should try not to become dejected, and when very happy, should calm our minds. So, to really look at this particular quote, because when you study the way, so let, let, first of all, let's, let's think about that concept, the way. The way of the samurai, the way of the warrior, the warrior way, uh, bushido, the way of the samurai, the code of the samurai. There's so many different ways that people um, use um, words to denote their take on it. Of course, it's objective. Uh, See, when you study ancient texts, a lot of it is based on perception. Of course, some of the ancient texts, whether it's documents, scrolls, didn't show otherwise, some of it, it is what it is. This is it, this is how it is. But a lot of it is based on perception, and perception is based on perspective. So when I'm studying from these ancient texts, I'm sharing with you guys my perception and what I feel needs to be pulled from these ancient words and then applied towards the martial arts that we teach within the Buddha Dukai. When you look at the first part of the, the quote, there is nothing so painful as regret. Just that alone, let's look at the first sentence. There's nothing as painful as regret. How true is that? How many of us want to sit on our deathbed and think about all the hours that we did absolutely shit and wish we had that time back? Right, all the hours you're looking at online porn or whatever it is, whatever you're doing that is 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 just filling a void, but it's not putting any you know any substance into your life. We're gonna lay in our deathbed, and the last thing we're going to do is exhale. The first thing you do when you're alive is inhale. The last thing you're gonna do is exhale. Who wants to lay on their deathbed and say, "I wish I would have. I regret I spent so much time doing that bullshit." Everybody is gonna want to know that they spent their time wisely. I've said this many times, life is time. When your time is up, your life is up. So when you're spending your time doing worthless shit, you're going to, there's gonna be a point when you're on your deathbed and you're gonna regret that. And so many times people forget that. They, they, they forget that the time that they have on this earth is not very long. And they need to take that time and use that time wisely. So. The first sentence is, there is nothing so painful as regret, absolutely true. It captures you from the front. Then it says, we would all like to be without it. However, when we are very happy and become elated, or when we habitually jump into something thoughtless, later we are distraught, and is for the most part because we didn't think ahead and are now regretful. So basically, 
All of us have been there. I've been there. But all of us have been to those points where you do something and it's like, fuck it, let's do it anyway. It's fun. It's exciting. We just go do it. And then it's not doing what you're doing. It's how you're doing it. Because you start doing other stupid shit that you regret. There, I understand that there has to be outlets in life. People have to go out and have a release. I'm all for it. There's nothing wrong with those experiencing life. You know, I'm all for freedom of expression, freedom of speech, live your life to be you, be happy, go experience those things, have those outlets in life, go out there and do those things. We need that. But on the other hand, you don't want to go beyond that. There's a point where if you do it too much, it hurts, right? So it's like if you eat too much, you start to gain weight. If you drink too much, you get, you get drunk, right? So, you know, you do anything too much, there's a bad effect that comes to it. So it's not doing things when you're really happy. It's doing things in excess when you're really happy. And once you become not just happy, but elated, when you become overjoyed, you start doing shit that you're gonna start regretting. And that's the point where you don't ever wanna to get to. So the last part of the quote, he says, we should try not to be, um, and when very happy, should calm our minds. So that's the very, the very end of it. And when we're very happy, you should calm your minds. It's so true. When you, when you get to the point where you're doing things out of not action, but reaction, you're, you're living in the moment, which is fine, but you're doing something beyond what it's supposed to be. You need to calm yourself and take a step back. There's no, you know, some people like to play video games as an outlet. That's great, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're gonna play six to eight hours of video games every single day, well now it's a little stupid. You're gonna regret the time that you sat there playing Call of Duty. You're gonna regret that at the end of your life. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe that is, that's, maybe sitting down in some room playing Call of Duty brings some higher power into your life. I don't know, you know, it's your life. But I'm going to bet that when you look at the, your time on Earth, you know, Spending six to eight hours playing some video game probably isn't what is the person that you see yourself as or the person that you want to be. So when you're feeling, when, when you're dealing with these with fear and anxiety and depression and or maybe just the mindset of I want to be better than what I am. Well, you have to ask your questions. What are you doing? And if what you're are, is it making you happy? And if it's not making you happy, why the fuck are you doing it? You know, I'm all, like I said, there's nothing wrong with going out, having, going to the parties. There's nothing wrong with going out, having a few drinks, going out with your friends, you know, going to the club, having fun. But there's a point where you have to step back away from that and not let the experience in life or those outlets that we, and we need to have those outlets. There's nothing wrong with having the outlets. It's at what point do you let the outlet control your life? That's when you have to step back and control your mind. Don't let something control you. You control your life. So I think it's really important for all students of the martial arts to understand life is time. You have so much time on this planet. When your time is done, you're done. You need to use that time wisely. Life is also experience. You need to have those experiences. You should go out with your friends and have a good time when it's the right time. You should go out to the club and have a good time. You should go out and do all these experiences that you want in life. I'm Anyone who knows me and my approach, there's, I am not saying you should, you know, put yourself into a room and meditate, you know, 12 hours a day or whatever. Absolutely not me. Anyone who's followed my channel or me on social media, you know that I teach martial arts. I also work in adult entertainment. So I am the most unconventional martial art teacher there is. But the, I'm all for the experience, but you can't let the experiences run your life. Right? Live your life, but you have to live it in a constructive way. There's nothing wrong with doing the things that you guys want to do. There's nothing wrong with adult entertainment. There's nothing wrong with the games. There's nothing wrong with having a few drinks. But once those things start running your life, now there's a problem. You choose your path. You don't let something else choose your path. So again, from the Hagakure and Yamamoto Sutomo, one more time. There is nothing so painful as regret. We would all like to be without it. However, when we are very happy and become elated, or when we habitually jump into something thoughtlessly, later we are distraught. And it is for the most part because we did not think ahead and are now regretful. Certainly, we should try not to become dejected, and when very happy, should calm our minds. 
So for all of you guys, if this is one of your first videos that you've seen of me, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dikai. Uh, if you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please check out our website at www.buddhodininjutsu.com. There you can see all five areas of training, uh, the seven warrior traditions that we teach here within the Buddha Dikai. You can also get a list of our schools. If you live next to one of our schools and you would like to study with, uh, with us, that would be absolutely wonderful. Anyone with a good heart and who's willing to learn is more than happy to train with us. If you don't live next to one of our schools, we do offer an online ninjutsu dojo that you can enroll in and still study with us uh, via online. So again, it's www.budodyuninjutsu.com. Check out our website, and uh, like I said, if you're interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, we'd love to work with you. Thank you very much for your love and support. Until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck in your journey of Budo. Blessed be.